right, right now we've got East Tennessee rock band. This is the Buds. Watch What's up, there? everybody? Hey. All right, and uh, we, we've got Scott, Matt, Nate, and Brandon. Is that correct? That's yeah. right. All right, that's absolutely yeah, working on new song. I'm sorry, run that by me again. I said we're just chilling in the studio, working on our new tr- on our latest track. Ain't nothing wrong with that, man. Ain't nothing wrong with that at all. So uh, let let's start off with, tell us what was the rundown barbershop was like. Later, you called the jam room. How 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 was that back in the day? <laughs> well, it was. At first, it was the most amazing place we ever had. We were finally out of our parents' garage. We had our own place. We were paying rent, you know. But eventually, we got robbed a few times. You know, it was in a pretty bad neighborhood. But every time we got robbed, it almost seemed like it brought us closer together. We'd work even harder to get even better equipment. We'd work on our harmonies. Because that's the only instruments we had left were our voices, you know, in the end. And it feels good to finally get out of there, but it's still a place that, that had some really good memories. Uh, I I didn't I didn't mean to bring it up like that, <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, but but I actually grew up in the project, so I understand what you mean. So yeah, I, I totally That's do. That's actually a great story, you know. It's like everything gets taken away, and what do you have left? And it's what uh, you know, what, uh, yourselves, and and just and so I bet that really, uh, you know, it really took you far, actually. So. Yeah, I mean, had that not happened, we probably wouldn't have harmonies like we do today. I mean, we did some two-part harmonies back then before, but it brought it made us start doing four-part harmonies just so we could do something, you know. Yeah, we got robbed twice. Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty bad. We had to do it again. All right, so so uh, what was Big Mama's Battle of the Bands back in 2008? What, what was that like for you all? Uh, were you nervous, and did you have any idea you would win? We were extremely nervous, and we definitely didn't think we'd win because it was a year-long competition, and there were bands doing it for like a month. There were there were bands that were playing it for like ten months, and we got in in October, and um, it was kind of it was kind of a challenging thing to surpass all the votes that they had already acquired over the entire year. Are y'all doing interviews with the band too? Yeah, yeah, we're, we're doing inter- we're doing we're we're in the middle of an interview with the buds. Yes, I know that band. <laughs> you know that band? Well, do you have a question for them? Uh, I do. Yeah, yeah, we're we're doing inter- we're doing we're. Oh, all right, all right, you're gonna have to lower that in the background, guys. You, you got a lot of feedback, man. I know that band. <laughs> oh, that's better. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We'd like to know what yeah, we're going on and explore. Uh, uh, you want to know what? I'm sorry. If they're going to explore any other genres besides hard rock. Well, we're like, just are they going to do a rap song. There's rumors they're going to do a rap song coming up, and we didn't know. I can't answer any any specifics, but. We definitely aren't going to tie ourselves down to one genre. I mean, this this album that's coming out, Burned Down, it's going to be a hard rock album. But we might do some collab work in the future. All right. That, that's absolutely awesome. It looks like you got another person came on, too. Uh, do you want to ask the buds a question? Yes, I do. All right. Go ahead. I'm on. I can answer a que- ask a question right now. Go ahead. You're going to have to lower that in the background. <laughs> Are you talking to me? <laughs> what about now? So Yeah, okay. So what's going on? Hey, am I on the air or am I just talking to you? I'm on the air, dude. Yeah, you're on, you're the on the air. <laughs> oh, wow. Hey, this is Harley Dog Hilton. I got you on the internet, though, but I was kind of getting away to make sure I wouldn't get no feedback or anything. You're good. Sounds good now. Yeah, great. Oh, wow. 
Yeah, I just wanted to say, man, uh, the buds, they're bad. I, I love their new video, uh, that one, uh, Bring Me Down. I had a question for Matt. I was wanting to What's know uh, what it felt like to be controlled by a bitch with a voodoo doll. Wow. Dude, it was, it was a it was an experience that I I could never recreate. I'll tell you that it put me in a guitar solo trance. <laughs> I'll never be able to play that solo like I did in the video. I laugh my ass off every time I watch that <laughs> video, man. I laughed at Brandon when y'all pour your, the drinks on him, kind of like when well he didn't <laughs> on him, but he, something you all know, over him. And, that actually wasn't even planned. That was just you know natural. That was just. <laughs> That's what I thought. It was so yeah, funny. It looked cool. natural. And yeah, okay. uh, also, uh, I just like to bring up that uh, every time I watch it, it's different. It, it reminds me. Uh, I mean, remind me back of the day, you know, when videos were videos. You know, I mean, you know, back when rock and roll was rock and roll. Right. Some of our main influences from that were awesome like over-the-top 80s videos that really painted a picture and had a lot going on. We kind of wanted to, you know, give back to our influences by adding to the collection of the 80s feel. Well, it, it reminded me of the 80s videos. It really did. I mean, like, I always laugh when that Scotty dude gets a cigarette and tosses it and blows that voodoo chick up, and then she comes outside screaming, you know, and he's like, Hey, are you that chick on Facebook? You no, know, he don't even know what's going on. It's just funny you're in hell. I love that video. Well, thank you so much for watching, man. Oh, you're welcome, man. I, I'm glad I um, I watch that video every day. <laughs> oh, that's great. Awesome. Here to share yeah, we just crossed a million views. It's probably because people like you sharing it and telling all their friends about it. Yeah, uh, that, I do. It's that's funny. what it's about. And it's good rock too. I mean, you know, but it was it was a lot like I don't know. I mean, it was it took me a lot of like Van Halen type videos, you know, where he had a little crazy twist to it, you know. Absolutely. Well, yeah, that was one of our main influences, like Hot for Teacher. They had a really cool video for that. Yeah, are y'all gonna do one of them like that? Oh. And Matt, since you don't want to date that chick anymore, uh, I don't know if I would really get into voodoo dolls or not, but you think you could get her my phone number? <laughs> definitely, definitely. I, I'll tell you, though, be careful, man. Be very careful with that one. She's crazy. <laughs> She'll burn your house down. Yeah, but no. Maybe I might not have a house, but maybe she'll make me poplar like you, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, all right, moving on. Does anybody else have a question for the buds? I do. All right, go ahead. Okay. Well, Matt, uh, guys, uh, do you collaborate on the lyrics, or is there an official lyric writer? Well, we do a lot of collab, but I'd say the main lyricist is the lead singer, Scott. Okay. And, um, yeah, he'll bring us a great idea, and we'll all just sit around and, and throw our, our little two cents in there. And when it comes to the music, we all write our own instrument. Awesome. In the uh, all, all right. So you were, uh, you know, explaining a little bit, but let, let's get back to it real quick. Uh, let's go back to 2008. And, uh, you, you know, uh, when you uh, won the Battle of the Bands, and you said that you had no idea uh, you would win, and you said it was a year-long contest. Could, can you elaborate a little more on that? Yeah, sorry, I couldn't. I couldn't really hear myself earlier because of all the feedback and stuff. But um, I apologize about that. But um, yeah, like it was a year-long competition, and we got in at about month number ten. So there were all these bands that had been accumulating votes for like months and months, and um, it was like. It was kind of a, a difficult, a difficult thing to try to catch them up, catch up with them because the voting system was a little flawed. I feel like because voting started as soon as one band performed, and they could keep, you know, building votes as the year went on. And in month ten, you know, we were able to surpass every band that had already been in it almost a year, and you know, more than double the second place band by the end of the competition, and we won that by a landslide. Wow. And there was 130 bands in the competition, so it was 
it was a challenge, but we brought our... We encouraged a lot of people to watch it, and we were doing it constantly. We were badgering them about it. And, but, but with this video, you know, crossing a million views, it was pretty grassroots. People just did it themselves, and we only really shared it a few times on Facebook. And it, I, I really don't know how it skyrocketed so much. But like our international listeners have been going up especially, and we've been noticing that. Yeah, it's crazy. It started a big chain reaction, and now it's in multiple countries, like so many different countries. It's crazy. It all started with the party that was our music video release party, and we told everyone that enters, you know, you get in free if you share our video on your Facebook page. And from that point on, it caused a big chain reaction, and now people in Russia are listening to it. It's pretty awesome. To wait. Sweet, and it looks like you got uh, somebody else that called in or maybe somebody called back. Do you want to ask the buds a question? Hey, how you doing, boys? Great. What's up? This is Big Daddy Earl. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Big Daddy Earl? I can't believe you made it. You didn't invite me, man. All right. <laughs> What's up? What's up? Play my song now. What's up? All right, love y'all. That, that's all you wanted to say, you love? <laughs> we love you too, Big Daddy Earl. All right, well, Big Daddy Earl loves you. <laughs> hey, can I say something? Go ahead. Uh, I tell you what's really crazy, man. I watch this band all the time for about two years now. All right. And uh, they were at uh, Twin City Drive-In here in Bristol. And it was a storm come, right? I mean, I'm talking crazy first storm. Okay. There was 200 people there. Now that yeah, that was a crazy show. Yeah, it was an outdoor cars event. there anyway. I know. I'm, I'd say there's more people than that, really. But uh, at least 200 cars there in the rain, man. And we had a good time. Uh, that's, that's what it's about. That's such a big turnout because it, it was looking crazy. And. Uh, <laughs> It was awesome, though. Everybody got really wet and, and moshed around and had a crazy time in the audience. Oh, yeah, everybody got wet that night. There was even a tornado warning, and people didn't care. They were like, <laughs> we are going hard for the buds. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, the night before. It was an epic night. Yeah, that had to be the night I was interviewing Minor Nine. I mean, uh, Omega Down. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we had uh, we had uh, the phones in the background going, warning, warning. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's what it's about, though. It's about having, you know, just having fun and everything. So, uh, you know, what I what I noticed is that y'all play all over, and but the biggest ones that y'all uh, do is Baltimore, D.C., New York, and then uh, Nashville. Well, what was the more what was the most fun to play, and why? Well, I'd say the most fun for me, at least, was um, playing this big place in Baltimore called the Senator Theater. It was there was about like eight or nine different acts there, and all of them were completely different genres. And we were a little nervous, you know, going up there because there were rap fans there, metal fans there, you know, country fans there, just about every style you can think of. And we were last to play, and the whole place stayed packed, so we really didn't know what to expect from the crowd. And um, these are like, I'd say there was about 500 people in the audience. And um, the moment we struck that first chord and went into our song, the crowd roared. And it was just an epic feeling. You know, that was the first huge show that we got to play. And um, it was really gratifying to see all these people that appreciated different genres just love what we were offering. It's a great feeling. Awesome. Especially that considering that we really felt like the oddball at that show. Because we sounded a lot different than the lineup, I remember. That was one of the first shows I played with them. That's Brandon, by the way, the drummer. Well, nice to meet you, Brandon. <laughs> you too. Hey, guys, what do y'all do after a show? I mean, just to go out and just blow the steam or just to celebrate? Or is there something that you usually do? Or is it different every time? Or It's, it's always different. <laughs> it's never the same. <laughs> It really depends on what city we're in, what people we're around. Uh -huh. I mean, do anything from a crazy party with 100 people to sit down and read a book after a show. No, I bet you're pretty bad. 
But it normally always ends up with us going to IHOP at like <laughs> four in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but most importantly, no matter what we do after a show, we always do it together, and we're always hanging out. Yeah. So I mean, I I can just imagine that it would be really hard to just you know want to go to sleep after a night like that. You know what I'm saying? Like you just want to like hang on to the moment. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best feeling in the world when you come off the stage. Yeah. Oh, awesome. So, uh, you know, if you could put the buds in a blender just for just for a second, hypothetically speaking, we don't want anything to happen to any of y'all. Um, <laughs> what uh, what, uh, what styles would come up? What styles would come up? <clears throat> I'd say guitar-driven, fun rock and roll, you know, like something like Kiss or Boston, you know, and even coming a, a little bit more recent with bands like, you know, Nirvana or Alice in Chains or even Avenged Sevenfold feeling it sometimes. It really just depends on how we're feeling when we write the song. You know, we could even write a song that has a Prince feel to it. It's just our influences are all over the place. I ain't nothing wrong with that. So uh, so, so it, here's here's the thing. Where did y'all meet each other, and, and and how did y'all form? Well, three of us are family members, and Nate's our best friend, our best player. Well, there you go, <laughs> keeping it in the family. Yeah, yeah, he's pretty much family. family. Yeah, and Nate's pretty much family. What is so, like? Uh, what's the main message that you would just love for the world to know, like? Um, if if you just had like a main theme or a main goal for the world to know from you as a band, what would it be? Well, we definitely want everyone to know that rock and roll, true rock and roll is not dead. One of our idols, Gene Simmons from Kiss, recently did an interview and said that rock and roll is dead, and we beg to differ. We're here to bring back rock and roll. It's um it's not the dominant genre right now, but we hope that we can change that because we're going to yeah, we're going to contribute our little piece. Hey, rock and roll will never die, man. <laughs> never. <laughs> Not as long as we can change. I think bands like, you know, the Foo Fighters has kind of proved that a lot, too. That's one of um, our favorite bands, too. And another thing that's cool about that is that Dave Grawl is a really big Kiss fan, like our family is. And <laughs> we don't know, like, Foo Fighters and Kiss, that's two big bands that we like a lot. Yeah, Dave yeah. Fighters rule. We'd love to open up for them one day. Dave, if you're listening, <laughs> give us a call. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, if you if you could tour with anybody besides Kiss, anybody uh, who would you like to tour with? Um, that's a good one. I would love to, like Brandon said earlier, I would love to play with Foo Fighters. They're definitely one of the last remaining true rock bands. Who would you like to tour with, Nate? Um, I've got to say Avenged Sevenfold. Uh, they're probably my favorite act, personally, so. Yeah, Foo Fighters, Avenged, any rock and roll band, really, we'd love to tour with. When we played with Acidic, that was really cool. I mean, um, we were we sounded a little bit different than them, but we got along well with them. Pretty much any band that I think that we'd get along well with and sound well with, we would tour with them. Anyone who brings a big crowd so we can steal their fans. <laughs> or that, too. Oh. Uh, we try not to be too competitive with the other bands we play with, but I guess that's always there a little bit. So. I kind of have an off-the-wall off question, really, but... Um, we love off-the-wall. Shoot. Yeah, it, it, I was a psych major, so I kind of asked <laughs> these questions that, you know, where the answers are really telling, but... Um, okay, if if you were caught on a quiet night uh, reading a book, what would that book be? Just just all by yourself, you think you're alone, and, and you just want to have a good read of a novel or, or a book, what would that book be? Um, <laughs> that, that's a really good one. You know, the last book that I read was Paul Stanley's autobiography, Face the Music. It was awesome. It has a lot of a lot of insight about starting a band, a seeing a vision, you know. I like autobiographies because, well, if it's somebody that I can truly relate to, like Paul Stanley from Kiss, he's like my idol. So 
when I read his book, I could relate to him on a lot of different levels. I'll tell if you read Hello. something, King. Hello. Hi. Hey. Who's uh, this? My name is Nicole. Hi, Nicole. Hi, What's up, I'm Nicole? Dave Meridium. Uh, I have a question for the lead singer. Okay. Um, what is your favorite band? My favorite? Of course it's Kiss. <laughs> Kiss is my favorite so. band ever. Always will be my favorite band. But, okay, I mean, up in, I'm my favorite. The Buds are my favorite band, too. So. Yeah, that's my favorite <laughs> band, The Buds. Yeah. <laughs> so, the guitarist, I have a question for him. Okay. What's up, Nicole? Um, so what was your favorite guitar yeah, you've I'm ever single. had? <laughs> my favorite guitar I ever <laughs> My favorite guitar I ever had would have to be an Ibanez Iceman. It's the one that I've recently got. I had one just like it when I was in high school and um when I was sixteen years old it got stolen from me. And I recently bought one just like it. So that would definitely Aww. be my so it's yeah, I played it at my last show, and I'm actually touring with it this, this summer. Okay, and I'm a little bit clueless on the tour information. Where are you all touring? We are playing in Memphis, Tennessee, May the 17th. We're playing in Amarillo, Texas, May the 20th. The 22nd, we're playing on a radio station in Tulsa. And we're playing the legendary Whiskey A Go Go May 24th in Los Angeles, California. That one's going to be awesome. There's a lot of epic bands that have played there. It's got a big history. And we're playing at Alice Cooper's Bar called Alice Cooper's Town in Phoenix, Arizona, May the 25th. We're playing in Oklahoma City at the Red Brick Bar May the 26th. And we're coming back to our hometown to, to end out the tour at the Holston River Brewing Company in Bristol, Tennessee, May the 29th. It's a short tour, but it should get So, where is the show on May 20th? On May 20th, it's, the, it's in Amarillo, Texas, at the, at the I Don't Know Sports Bar and Grill. Well, I'll have to come there, because that's my birthday. Really? Oh, well, yeah. we hope to be there. We'll give you a free T-shirt for your birthday. Okay. Well, thank you, and I hope you guys have fun and good luck. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Bye. Thanks, Nicole. We'll see, you. see you, Nicole. All, r- all right. All right, so so what I want to know is how great of a feeling is it to be a small-town band, uh, you know, come from a small town and have a YouTube video with over a million hits? Um, You know, I... I don't know, it really for me it's it's like uh gratification for years of hard work, you know. Um I feel like we've all put in our dues at this point and I don't know, I believe that um that's something that we've you know, like I said we've worked hard for. Um uh, but it's just the beginning, you know. Uh this is the first uh, major production, I would say. I, you know, I'm not really speaking for everybody else, but one of the first major productions we've done as a band and uh, like I said, it's sort of going to set the tone for where we want to go and who we want to be uh, in the future. Awesome. That, that, that's a good, you know, that's a good take on it. But with that being said, what what advice would you give somebody new that wanted to, uh, you know, get into the business and really wanted to pursue a career, knowing how hard it is and knowing that if you're in certain areas, you could get robbed and, I mean, I mean, just crazy stuff. What what positive advice would you give them? Well, um, <clears throat> I don't know that it's really positive, but you have to you have to be ready for um, moments of you know humiliation and let down a lot. I mean, we've we've worked with a lot of people. That, you know, it, it just didn't turn out the way we thought. We've had some rough times and stuff, but you gotta you just gotta be ready for that. It's not gonna always be a cakewalk. You're gonna get robbed. You're gonna work with cons. You're gonna. It's gonna be bad sometimes. But you know, as long as your band is tight knit, I, I think you'll do fine. Yeah. That's awesome. Awesome. 
And uh, so, so your first stop in your tour is going to be in, uh, is that Memphis? Is that correct? Yeah, Memphis. We're going to um, we're gonna be playing at Rock House Live. It, it seemed like a really cool bar. We've been talking to the venue owner. He's, he's really cool. He's going to take care of us when we get down there. We're, we're really excited to be in Memphis. It'll be our first time there. Awesome, awesome. And, and from things I'm hearing, I'm hearing that the Tri-Cities is really a big place as far as, like, bands to, you know, really get out, and they actually care about bands. So, uh, you know, what do you think about the scene, you know, between the Kingsport, Johnson City, uh, all them er- different areas, Morristown? Uh, how do how do you think how do you feel as a rock band that there's actually some place that actually cares? Well, I, I mean, I feel like down here that the rock bands all stick together. They really do. They all help each other out. Every time one of them catches a break, the rest of them try to help the other ones catch it. When one of them's building a big show, they try to invite the rest of the good rock bands to come and play it. I mean, it, I guess it's where it's such a smaller community that that we can all reach out to each other for help when we need it. You know, musicians can all work together at all times. It's almost clockwork here. It really is. We're constantly getting better. We're constantly practicing. We're constantly collaborating. A lot of the bands play at the same venues and, uh, you know, have a lot of the same fans and stuff. And a lot of the bands around here are friends, good friends with each other and play shows with each other and stuff. Um, You know, I mean, we used to know a few people. Some of them moved out of town, but we play shows with them all the time. And, um... Another thing I've noticed a lot about the local bands around here is that everybody cares a lot about their fans. You know, it's like a really tight-knit community, and everybody knows each other a lot, too. So I guess that's kind of a plus for promoting your band. And there's a lot of talent in Bristol. It's a small town, but most of the people around here, Bristol, Johnson City, Kingsport, Elizabeth, and, you know, there's good bands that come out of all these areas. And um, most places that we play, you know, with some good acts, but I'd say the best that we played with are mostly around here. It's because there's not much to do around here, you know. There's just music and a movie theater, so <laughs> you should rather do. Yeah, there's a racetrack, but a lot of well, some people it drives them crazy if they live near it because, like, just the traffic gets real bad. We're not, we're not even used to bad traffic around here. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Hello. Uh, all right. It, it sounds like you got a new caller. Uh, do you want to ask about the question? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say um, I saw y'all's new video for the Bring Me Down song you did, and I thought that was really awesome, and I read that you guys are, you have a gig at the Hard Rock Cafe. Uh, when's that going to happen? Oh, thank you very much. Thank you so much for checking out the video. I think you're referring to either the Rock House Live in Memphis or are you talking about the Whiskey A Go Go in Los Angeles? Oh, there's not a Hard Rock Cafe. No, it's um, we're playing at Rock House Live. We're and we're playing at the Whiskey A Go Go. I think you might be talking about the Whiskey. That's the one that's the really big deal for us. Some of our favorite okay, bands stay there. That's in California, right? Yeah, Los Angeles, California, on Sunset Strip. We're playing there. The 24th of this month, and some of our favorite bands have played there, like Guns N' Roses. They got their start there, Motley Crue. You know, the door to be a house band there, so we are so glad to be not only playing, but we're headlining that event, so that's going to be really sick. Awesome. Well, I'm done. a big fan. Y'all keep doing what you're doing. Thank you're great. So Thank you so much. Awesome. Bye. Bye. All righty then. Sounds like right, you're right. going to have a lot of ladies coming to see you guys. <laughs> they ain't nothing wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, we love the ladies. <laughs> they ain't <they> complaining. <laughs> 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 so, uh, so what else uh, y- y'all got going on this year? And if people wanted to, uh, you know, buy your music or uh, check you out, where can they go? Well, you can go to our official website, thebudsmusic.com. That's T-H-E-B-U-D-D-Z, music.com. And um, you can get download links to any of our songs that are currently out. You can buy hard copies of our CDs. You can buy T-shirts, tank tops, you know, anything from that website. And they've got our, we've got our tour dates and stuff like that up. So that's basically the, the place to get anything you need Buds-related. 
All right, and, and I have a yeah, I have a one more uh, question for you. When you're actually, you know, on stage, what makes your band uh, different? What makes the Buds different than every other band that's out there? The energy, a hundred percent, the energy. There might be a couple shows where we're not the tightest band in the whole world, you know, but. At, but definitely every single person in the crowd is having fun. Everybody's dancing. Everybody's moving like a rock show is supposed to be. Awesome. Absolutely fantastic. So, uh, you, you know, all right, let, let's fast forward five years just real quick. In five years from now, how would you define being successful? Five years from now, being successful to me, would mean living off my music and not having to do any other work. All right, and the, and the rest of the band? I'd just like for, you know, for stuff to keep moving forward. As long as we don't, you know, digress, as long as we keep, you know, making more leaps and bounds. Because every single time we put out something new, I feel like we get closer and closer to our goal, which my goal would be, you know, it's a long-term goal, but I'd love to win a Grammy someday. That would definitely be a dream come true for me. Now I'm going to pass it on to the bass player. The insightful one, right? Uh, <laughs> um, for me, like, I don't know, it would just be, we worked so hard uh, to build our foundation and, um, you know, build just a, a repertoire of who we are, like, and who we want to be, and um, you know, just sharing that with as many people as possible. I, I think that's uh, that's always a good long-term plan. But yeah, definitely a, a Grammy would definitely be awesome. That, that would be a, that'd be a life goal for sure. Oh God, he says a Grammy. I'm just like, I just don't want to be a starving artist anymore. <laughs> I want more people to hear my music, and I pretty much want the same thing as what Scotty said at first. You know, I I think I'd I'd be really grateful for that. I mean, we've been doing a lot better now, you know, but of course we always have in the back of our mind those kinds of things that Nate says about Grammys and stuff, you know. Grammy would be nice. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. All right. Um, so so do you have any – I know you all are busy and everything, but do you all have anything you want to touch base on yourselves or um, – I'm sorry. What's that again, man? All right, I, I, I'm sorry. Is, is there any uh, is there anything that I might have missed that may be coming up that you'd like to speak on, real quick? I don't have a release date yet, but we are working on our new album called Burn Down, and Bring Me Down is actually going to be on that album, so the one that just got all the views on YouTube and stuff. We're in the process of recording it now with a mega producer, Dave Fortman. He records big bands like Slipknot, Godsmack, Mudvayne, Evanescence. And he used to be lead guitar for Ugly Kid Joe in the 90s, one of our big influences, too. So it's been cool working with him, and we're excited to finish this album and let the public hear how far we've came since our last one. Awesome, awesome. All right, well, I hope you all had, uh, you know, fun on TwoLocalRadio.com and everything, and I hope uh, you can uh, let people know who we are, too, because we actually care about you know, the local bands don't matter if you even become world famous and get your Grammy. We still give a shit about. It. So, well, we Grammy first interview will be on two loco radio. Well, we, we appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for supporting all these bands that still haven't been solicited yet. It's, it's not many radio stations that still care about the people that aren't, you know, being force fed music. Like, yeah, you guys really care about the cause. It's pretty awesome. Thanks again for doing what you're doing. Not a not a problem. All right. Well, do you have anything? Uh, uh, any last words, Miss uh, DJ Meridian? We do. love you, DJ Meridian. Uh, you're hot. What was that? Thank you so much. We said you're hot. Oh, thank you. So if you want to come to a show, you know. No, no problem. <laughs> that, it passes. Okay. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, all right, all right. And look, hey, uh, you guys, we really somebody do. else that just came in too. Oh, cool. Guys, keep the brotherhood, okay? That's oh, yeah. Hey, all that working hard that you do, and sticking together, and uh, through all the hardships and all the wins. You know what I'm saying? 
Absolutely. It's just been really great hearing your story about that, and I'd love to learn more um, in the future as well. So by all means, you know, call in to keep us updated. Yeah, we came this far. There's no way we're backing down now. We've been awesome. through too much together. Exactly. And it, once again, hear. it sounds like you have a, a new caller. Uh, do you want to ask the bud the question or give a shout-out real quick? Yeah, definitely. Hey, this is a shout out from uh, Northeast Tennessee calling again and saying that we went and watched them boys uh, at the drive in theater. What a fantastic show! Unbelievable. Um, in fact, uh, I run a security firm. You guys are going to need bodyguards soon enough for how big y'all are going. I'm really excited for you guys. Just wanted to say a, a good shout out and appreciate everything y'all are doing. Thank you so much for coming to the show and thank you for your kind words. And who knows, maybe we'll oh, be yeah, <laughs> Hey, definitely. Well, great. I'll definitely get a uh, business card to you guys because uh, oh. I, I, I see great things happening for you guys. But like I said, I really appreciate your show the other night. It was free to the community. It was really nice. We got a heads up, headed out there and seen it, and uh, really enjoyed the time. Me and my girlfriend really rocked. It was awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming, man. Hopefully, it won't be your last Bud show. We're playing again in Bristol if you're if you're free May the 29th at the Holston River Brewing Company. You should come by and see us. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, there's a shout out for everybody. Get to the Brewing Company. <laughs> awesome. There you go. All right. Well, you all have a great uh, evening, and uh, we will talk to the Bud crew in the future. Sounds good, man. Sounds good. You have a good one, buddy. Oh, all right, all right. So, so is there any uh, any last words you, you want to say, or anybody you want to shout out to? I I got to give a shout out to uh, your manager. Uh, she does a hell of a job and everything, and she's a very kind-hearted person. And yeah, we definitely got to give her a shout out. She's the reason that so many of these big things are happening. She got us in with our big producer. She got us in with um with the with the whiskey a go go this summer. So Ellen Smile, that's my sister. Smile to Ellen. And she is she's the greatest manager we've ever had. We don't we, even call her a manager. We say she's a band member because she really is. She does just as much as we do. If not more. <laughs> Probably more. Yeah. yeah, she does a lot more than us actually. Yeah. We just, you know, play the music, we rock out and she handles everything behind the scenes. So if it wasn't for her, we would still be in the garage playing. Pretty cool. What, well, what I love, what I love before I let you go though, is that you all are family, and you all stick together. And in this day and age, to find families that stick together, that actually care about each other, and want to support each other, is very hard. And hats off to you all. I, I give you so much credit. Thank you. Thank well, you, you guys so much. Know how for... to find me, right? Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Touch. <laughs> oh, we will. We will. <laughs> all right. Well, appreciate you. All, all Thank right. you so much. All right. Well, Scott, Matt, Nate, and Brandon, it's been a blast, and we're going to play your other song right next. Home is on my mind. But thank you for joining us, and come back anytime. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks for having us, man. Enjoy the song. All right. You you have yourself a wonderful evening. Take care. You too. All right. Well, we're about to play the Buds. Home is on my mind. Before we do, uh, Miss Meridium, do you have anything else you want to say? Dreamy. Oh, isn't that sweet? <laughs> All right. Here's the Buds. Home is on my mind. I hope everybody enjoyed the interview. And stay tuned because Logan Arsenault, We'll be in uh, talking about what's going on in Nashville as of tomorrow around 9 o'clock. We're so excited. Mm -hmm. This is Home is on My Mind by the Buds. Trapped inside the cell and thrown away the key. I don't know if I'll ever make it home. And you wanted to miss that? Uh-uh, no. 